So I just want to give a bit of extended conversation about Chauncey Golston. Uh, I, th I think, you know, he's the one player that kind of sticks out to me in this offseason that we're projecting the most change for. Now, when we were talking about Chauncey Golston coming out of Iowa, uh, we saw a tough player, a uh, gritty player. And, and I, I hate that we got to use tough and gritty for guys that we don't consider super athletic. But it is what it is. He's a tough and gritty player. Um, more of a strong, stout kind of guy than a, you know, quick, twitchy, edge rusher, edge rusher kind of dude. When we looked at Chauncey, we projected him to be a left side player, a left defensive end type player, strong side player, left side player. I say that and it just immediately makes me think about Tyler Smith. I apologize there. Um, but when we talk about Chauncey Ghost, we, we think about him as a left defensive end, strong side defensive end, as a guy that's more of your run stopper. Um, and that's what we saw from Chauncey. Yes, he could get you some pass rush production, but he was mostly going to be making his money in the run game. Um, if we were going to see something from Chauncey in the pass rush game, it was going to be via three tech. But as a sometimes three tech, like as a D law, sometimes three tech, you know, a dude that we can boom, 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 third down. Here you go. Put you in B gap, put some other edge rushy dudes out there and we can just kind of fly. Um, and we even saw last year. You know, Chauncey, as a as a cowboy, we saw the end game formation kind of thing that we're doing, right? Just my quick summary of the end game formation. I'm going to drop a video uh, on Tuesday on the volume, so be sure to tune into that. Um, but end game is something that Dan Quinn did uh, last year, and it was sort of our pass rush package. You know, some people will call it like a NASCAR package when you take as many of the, you know, pass rushy defensive end edge player dudes that you can and just kind of fit them in. But there'll still be some here and there, here and there. Dan Quinn took six defensive events and we just did whatever with him so it'll be a combination of you know basham dorrance uh d law randy micah and then chauncey would just kind of be a guy that'll just fit anywhere within that that package or whatever he'll mostly be doing a bunch of a gap and b gap things right so you know we go through the year and the end game package was phenomenal right like it, it, it was it was a fun thing to watch and you know you just kind of plug those dudes into that package it looks fun like oh man who's gonna get something now da, 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 da. and we'll see basham get some sacks in the end game package we'll see you know chauncey get his why because we saw you know how much attention that michael pulls or how much attention randy pulls randy will probably be like the dante fowler type guy in this situation or the attention that you know d law pulls or whatever that it'll just open open things up for the you know for the other three end game guys um Dorrance armstrong had six sacks uh last year and that was the best season that he's ever had so in game formation happens all right cool that's fun so we really only saw chauncey do um majority b guy things in in game formation but he was mostly run game defensive end on the left side now we get to the playoffs and the 49ers thing kind of happens and me and will still talked about this you know kind of throughout the week on the volume we've been talking about this for like two weeks really um how much did the playoff performance affect roster building right and we look at the draft what the cowboys did we wanted to get a little more stout we got some more run defending players um you know we got phil's going the offensive side as well uh we add in ridgeway or whatever it just looks like we don't want to get picked on in the run game anymore um, but boy, we got a little bit of peanut butter watch, uh, just over the past couple of, uh, you know, couple of weeks and Chauncey Golson has gotten big as hell. Uh, word on road is that, uh, Chauncey has added an additional 20 pounds. And I was like, 20 pounds a lot. 20 pounds is a lot player. I don't know if you could just put on 20 pounds and use it functionally, but then we saw the pictures. Oh, <laughs> we waited time. Do I got my button set up? Yes. We saw the pictures. Oh, we saw the pictures and Chauncey Golson is big as hell now. Um, so we have a lot of questions here, right? And I'm going to just, you know, splatter some Chauncey Golson film throughout this. Um, Chauncey was a solid player last year as a defensive end. Now, I have no clue what Chauncey's going to be doing now this year. He's the size of a three tech, but does that mean he can't play defensive end? I mean, I wouldn't say that he can't do that because, you know, when Dan Quinn was orchestrating Legion of Boom things, there was this cat named Michael Bennett, who was a bigger defensive tackle kind of guy that played a bunch of defensive end and sometimes three tech for you. So I'm not just going to put it past the idea that Chauncey could be going for that kind of role as a left defensive end three tech guy. Um, but what I'm what I'm getting from or at least the 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 final theory or you know thought that i came up with the notion was is that we're trying to get 
as many big guys big right like we're trying to maximize our bigness toughness strength size and things of that nature so that we don't just get pushed around in the run game anymore because we felt like there was any impediment to the dallas cowboys especially on defense last year it would be the run game now what i find interesting is that i feel like overall we were good on defense right i feel like we we're a solid defense versus the run and you know versus the pass of course you know we got pass rushers we got corner snagging 11 interceptions anthony brown got his three and a, and a gang of pass deflections um, Malik Hooker's probably going to be playing full time now. Uh, J. Ron Curse is a guy that we feel comfortable with. You know, uh, Kelvin Joseph is emerging. So I think if we feel good about anything, I think pass pass defense is fine. Um, but if there were some games we felt really really bad about, it was when we played the Broncos ran the ball all over us we looked at the chiefs game in real life i implore you guys i just I, I love to you know keep everybody updated keep everybody up to track and make sure that, that the narrative is appropriate pat mahomes really didn't smoke us last year if you go back and watch the film i think we did a, a decent job against pat but clyde was running all over the place and the chiefs running backs were running all over the place and i was pissed off watching the game because in my mind if anybody's going to beat us I, I thought it was going to be pat we were solid versus the pass we couldn't stop the run you know and then you know of course we get to the um playoff game of course uh you know with the eagles being being such a good run team that they are they couldn't do nothing with us but when we got to the playoffs um you know we let me just but when we got to the um to the playoffs or whatnot right we were we were looking around it was like all right san francisco we feel good about playing against jimmy we we feel good about jimmy throwing the ball and and my biggest game plan of attack that you know that week or whatever was make jimmy throw the ball we got to stop the run to make jimmy throw the football and every time jimmy threw the football boy it was just a bunch of nonsense just fluttering and floating in the air but we could not stop the run we had one of the worst defensive performances that we ever had in the game especially on our d-line because we got pushed around and got out physical now i wonder if that feeling if that vibe you know kind of floated around the organization it just kind of floated around the 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 coaching staff in the front office and everybody got into their illuminati meeting rooms and they said you know what we need to get bigger and stronger up front so we're not constantly getting pushed around chauncey golston I think Chauncey gaining weight and Neville Galmore gaining an, an additional 15 pounds plus the 15 that he put on last year. I think Chauncey Ghost and getting better is going to be uh, getting bigger uh, is a big part of that. Now, you know, last year when you were a rookie, you can only you only really account for what you do as a rookie. Hey, he's a rookie. You know what I'm saying? Okay, whatever he gives us, I right, cool, fine. Everybody's not going to be Michael Parsons and, and give you a uh, 13 section rookie campaign. But as a second year player, as a sophomore guy um, that's going through a full offseason, which is good and got a big dose of off-season peanut butter as a guy and Chauncey Golston is doing that right now we can expect that Chauncey Golston has a bigger plate in front of him and Chauncey did some good things last year man I'm not gonna just you know you know you know paint this as if Chauncey did nothing last year and we're counting on Chauncey now Chauncey made some pretty good plays for you last year but look at how small Chauncey was right I'm gonna have the film just kind of floating around or whatever um you know, look at how how small Chauncey was in this film in comparison to the peanut butter watch uh, that we had on Chauncey. You know, just throughout the week we've been looking at Chauncey got big, and I'm not saying that Chauncey's going to be a starter. I don't think he's going to be a starter, but I do think in these early down situations where we're pretty sure that the run game is going to happen, I'm sure D Law and Chauncey are going to be some guys that we're going to lean on there. I'm pretty sure that. You know, when when Osa Odigizua needs a break from three tech and, you know, maybe this means that Neville Galmore is going to be a full time one tech since he gained an additional 15 pounds. Maybe in my mind, your backup three tech now behind Osa Odigizua is Chauncey Golson. That makes things really weird for Tristan, but Tristan never really gained weight. We always look at Tristan, you know, he, he looks a little... And look, I'm, I'm saying this as, as a fat dude, so pardon me, but Tristan always looked a little pudgy. Like Tristan never really got that peanut butter, you know, boost that we were, you know, that we look for in, in, in some of these other guys. Neville done got two peanut butter boosts. And, you know, Chauncey has clearly gotten his. So if Chauncey takes over as the, you know, backup three tech or just as a rotational three tech defensive end dude that's going to get a lot of snaps, then it just kind of is what it is. Um, if you had to look at Tristan Hill, who's who, who looks a bit smaller and slimmer than Chauncey, you know, you know, Tristan could probably do some things in the, in the pass rush department for you. But if you put Tristan next to Chauncey, Chauncey is the bigger dude, the more stout dude. And based on his pedigree, when you look at the college film or even his rookie campaign versus the 
handful of games that Tristan Hill has put out over the past you know couple of years you would look at Chauncey be like Chauncey's the bigger stronger more stout player Chauncey even came from a system where he did a bunch of two gapping Tristan was an upfield penetrating player so I'd imagine Dan would use Tristan in that way but Chauncey is built for being big and stopping the run game and I think Chauncey's jump to this next level um, it's going to um, it's going to allow us to do more things in terms of our D-line personnel so when it's time to stop the run of course we're going to see guys like Ridgeway, we're gonna see guys like you know D Law being our base run defense player. We're gonna see guys like Bo Hanna, Carlos Watkins. Of course, that makes sense. Neville Gallimore playing one take. It just it just makes sense. Um, you know those kind of guys being out there. Um, but Chauncey Golston, what what makes it interesting about him, and we're we're probably gonna have to wait until camp to see this. But if he's bigger now, if Chauncey Golston is simply just a bigger player, um, the one thing that we have to look at is does he keep some of his defensive end movement skills? If he still moves around solidly, he doesn't have to keep the same type of movement. But hey, NFL peanut butter is weird. These dudes ain't just getting fat. Like like when we say they're getting big, they not just getting. Like they're getting swole when we say they're getting big. So when we look at, at Chauncey, if Chauncey's big girl and he still has some of that that solid movement, then you can pretty much put Chauncey in every, you know, every formation and platform that we run out there. If Chauncey's gonna be a defensive end for you, then fine. Just line him up at defensive end, put his hands in the dirt. If we're in a uh if we're in an odd front, like a three four front or like a three three stack look, and Chauncey gotta play some four eye head up over a tackle, then fine. Then put Chauncey in that situation, move on with your life. If Chauncey's got to be a three tech, then put Chauncey in that situation and move on with your life. I don't think there's not a thing on this defensive line that we can uh, that we cannot ask Chauncey to do. And then there's the end game formation, right? We can just put Chauncey in any of these gaps. He's a little bigger now. Put him in A gap, put him in B gap, let all the other guys rush around him. You have options now that Chauncey is bigger. So with that being said, I would love to ask y'all this in the um, chat box. Y'all can put it down in the chat, down in the comments. Uh, what do you expect from Chauncey Golston um, this year? There's going to be a lot of people like, but watch, you just hyping up Chauncey Golston. You think everybody's going to be a player for you. No, no, I'm not calling Chauncey Golston like this Pro Bowl player. I'm not even calling Chauncey Golston a starter in real life. I think if Chauncey Golston got a start for you, I think you're probably going through some injury things. D-Law is going to be your starter. On the other side, is going to be a stand-up rushy player. It's going to be... Dante Fowler is going to be Sam Williams is going to be, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, if that's the kind of role that he that he uh, that he that he fits in. I'm looking at Dante Fowler. Pardon me. I'm looking at Chauncey Ghost and not even as a starting three take because that's Osa's job. If you got to fit Neville at three take, sometimes that'll be him. I think Neville's going to be mostly one take, though. Um, Chauncey's going to be a dude that's probably going to be the first guy off the bench in terms of like rotation wise, the first guy coming off the bench. And I think he's a player that's vers versatile enough to put him in multiple positions. And there's always going to be room for players like that. You know, um, when D Law comes off the field, what do we do? Then who, who do we roll out there? And you want everybody in that rotation like you look at your d-line rotation it's probably going to be like 10 to 11 guys you want everybody in that rotation to be a dude for you to be able to do something for you carlos basham got three sacks last year not carlos basham terrell basham terrell basham one of the brothers one of the basham kids got drafted I think Terrell Basham is the one we got. So sure, uh, Terrell Basham got three sacks last year, and that's just rushing part time. So um, I'm not saying that Chauncey's going to be a pass rushy, you know, guy. We're not going to be, you know, relying from relying on him to do that. Everybody else is going to be doing that. But if we, if you get three sacks from Chauncey Ghost, and he just is a is a solid, we're better as a run team now because Chauncey's playing here. Then I think um, you know giving Chauncey a little extra peanut butter was a good thing, and I think you've made a successful off uh, off season move uh, with bolstering your D line by simply um, yeah, you ain't got to sign another player. You just simply made Chauncey Golson a better interior player. We'll see though, man. We'll cross that road whenever we get there. Like I said, um, you know this is the the uh, the video for Friday, Tuesday. I'm going to drop a film session. Um, you know, kind of breaking down the end game formation a little bit more. Last year, we had a pretty good game versus Washington. Um, that's where we really, really, really rolled out the end game because everybody was healthy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every, everybody was healthy, so we really rolled out end game around that time. Um, so we're going to uh, watch some of that film on Tuesday just to, get, just to give you guys an idea of what it's possibly going to look like next year. All right? Appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Hit the like and subscribe buttons. We tune in, uh, tune in to us Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Central. And um, be sure to follow us on all our social media platforms the volume and Vosh Lombardi, V O C H L O M B A R D I. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woskin, the Peace Kiwiski. Have a safe weekend. Tell somebody you love, you love them. Peace, volume.